Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. We're going to start off by reading a scripture from the Book of Mormon in the Book of Moroni, chapter 8, starting in verse 8, RAV, verse 7 in the OPV. And the word of the Lord came to me by the power of the Holy Ghost, saying, Listen to the words of Christ, your Redeemer, your Lord and your God. Behold, I came into the world not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The whole need no physician, but they that are sick. Wherefore, children are whole, for they are not capable of committing sin. Wherefore, the curse of Adam is taken from them in me, that it hath no power over them, and the law of circumcision is done away in me. For announcements, you will notice that we've added a calendar to the menu on the Fellowship website, cjccf.org. And every Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, we have a, a Thursday meeting with a different topic. And those topics aren't locked in stone. They might change as we move forward. They're basically, a while back, originally, the reason why we started meeting on Thursdays at 8.30 was because we had a, a group of people that wanted to meet and talk about these different things. Uh, unfortunately, the people that asked for it didn't show up, so I just kind of left that Thursday open for people to come and talk about whatever. But I want to try to go back to that. We've been meeting every Thursday rather regularly, and there have been a variety of people at various numbers showing up for that. So I want to make sure that, that the calendar's there so everyone knows the door is open. And in addition to that, we have a temple committee meeting every first Saturday of the month. And we do that at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time because we want it to be a time when more people around the world can join us. Now, obviously, those are in Australia probably can't make that time because our 8.30 meetings in the evening are morning for them. And so the afternoon would be like midnight for them. So we still have to figure out what to do about our friends in, in Australia. But there are people in various parts of the world that would be able to join us, particularly in Europe, uh, at that time. So that's why we chose that particular time. If there is a time that works for you, we have a number of other meetings that we need to begin having. So let me know. We can see what else we can add to the calendar based on what you need and what you will actually come to. Because right now, I'm the one coming to all these meetings, and that does take time away from my family. So when People ask me to host something, and I do, and they don't come. You're literally taking time away from my kids. And I, I really want to be there for you guys, but at the same time, I also don't want to waste my time. So I hope I'm not being rude here. I'm just trying to be very forward about this. So if this changes, if, if people ask me to, to set up a certain specific time, I may ask you to be the person to facilitate the conversation and I may start out showing up and eventually not be there anymore because every time I, I, I don't get paid for this, I have a full-time job, I have seven kids and I really need to be there for my family. I, I can't keep setting things up because people ask for them and then sit there basically by myself. Uh, so if you are asking for something, I'd really appreciate it if you actually showed up for it. Um, is usually I'm doing the time that accommodates you and not myself. So that's it. Again, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to be real here. Um, the other announcement is I really want to start meeting in person for these Sabbath services. And when I'm watching, I've noticed that there's anywhere between one being myself and four people showing up. So I am adding to the calendar the opportunity to join me to watch this. We're not paying for Google Meets, and so because of that, we are limited to one hour. But if you would like to come, watch it with me. We can pause to say prayers. I don't think we're going to sing hymns because it doesn't really go very well, the hymns part, um, on, on these um, web conferences, web meetings. The timing is just too out of sync, and it just ends up being a huge mess. But we can still pray together, and we can still take the sacrament of communion together. And because we have an hour, these videos usually last anywhere between a half an hour and 45 minutes. So 
I'll be there about five minutes early. That's what I typically do. And so we should be able to watch it together. And afterwards, if we want to have a conversation, we can talk. And if we need to expand it, we can always jump off and then jump back on. But I, I really want to try to do more stuff in person. I, I know it's got to be lonely for you guys out there just watching these videos that I'm making uh, because I sit here and I watch them with you in silence, not talking to anybody. And, and you know, if you're there with your family, you're there with friends, that's awesome. I, I think that's great. But I've talked to a lot of saints that are just watching them by themselves. So I, I'd really like to create the option, at least, for us to do the sacrament service. I'm sorry, the Sabbath service together. Even if it's just me and one other person. You know, or if, if I'm there by myself, I don't mind on that one because I just want to make sure that we have an opportunity to worship together. It's it's really important to me. And also, if we ever are going to transition to a point to where I'm not doing these meetings anymore, then we need to see who can actually show up and who feels comfortable actually taking over. Because what I really want to do, my, my goal here is to, as one brother put it, fire Dave. <laughs> And have some other people take over these Sabbath services. I, I really feel impressed by the Spirit that I need to be working elsewhere. But until the Lord sends us someone to take over, and I, I say someone, I should say some people, I don't want to put this on one person because I know how much work it is. And so the more people that are helping with it, the lighter the load becomes. So that said, I have a few prayer requests. And there's a sister who, her, her baby passed away, it, just suddenly out of nowhere. And she is deeply mourning the loss. It's, it's really a family. It's brother and sister. Uh, it, it's the whole family that's, that's mourning this loss. But the sister is hurting really bad, and, and I know the rest of her family is too. I'm really struggling with this. So please keep her in your prayers. And I know this isn't an uncommon occurrence. We really need to be focusing more in the fellowship on families and how we can pray together, grow together, be one. We talk a lot about the home temple. A lot of people I talk to are individuals. So I would ask that this Sunday and every Sunday, this week and every week, please remember these brothers and sisters, these families in our prayers. When the seekers come, a lot of times they come alone, but they're not alone in their everyday lives. So please pray for the seekers and please pray for the families of the seekers. And if you have suggestions on or, or the ability to make help make programs and things for families, I would love to talk to you. So let's also pray that the Lord will send us some people who are qualified to help with family outreach, outreach to teenagers, outreach to children. There are a lot of people saying that the family is under attack right now. And when you see people attacking same-sex marriage, transgender people, I, I have to agree. Family is under attack. I see people attacking polygamists. The family is it's been under attack for a long time. People want to pigeonhole the family and, and define it for others instead of letting people work with the Lord to discover what a family means for them. I've even seen people attacking single parents and mixed families. So the family is definitely under attack. And we need to, as a fellowship, help build the, a kingdom that has not weapons to use against these people, but peace offerings. And that begins with your prayers, my prayers. So let's pray that we can strengthen the families. Let's pray for the sick among us. There are several people sick in my family right now, getting over illnesses. And I know there are others that are going through illnesses. There is a sister that is 
going into surgery. She needs your prayers that everything will work out well. And there are those that are seeing the hypocrisy in Christianity, in the Latter-day Saint movements, in, in all forms of religion, where we preach peace and love, but then what we do doesn't match what we're preaching. And so because of this, there are programs out there trying to convert people to atheism. There are evangelistic atheists out there trying to convert people to this, this philosophy. I do call it a religion because it is a, it's something you can't prove. It's a belief system. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. Obviously, as a Christian, I, I would rather people follow Christ. But if, if you're an atheist who believes in being a good person and loving your neighbor, then in, in my mind, that's, that's very Christian and wholesome. And, and so if, if that's what leads you to Christ in your non-belief in God, I, I do believe that, like Paul says and, and others in the scriptures, that when these brothers and sisters discover there actually is a God and that that God is filled with the love that they were doing themselves in life, that they will accept Jesus Christ and they will, they will rise to the celestial kingdom. Because it's not their fault that Satan's out there trying to convert people away from God. In my mind, the true problem isn't atheists that are good people. It's Christians that preach hate. That preach that Jesus doesn't want us to love our neighbors. So let's pray for our brothers and sisters that Satan is trying to deceive either away from God or towards a cruel and unloving God. And also, let's remember to pray for those that have been healed, those that have found salvation, those that have found safety in the fellowship or in any other branch of the Latter-day Saints movement or Christianity in general or in their lives, period. Let's rejoice with all those that rejoice. We shouldn't mourn with people who find God in other places. So with that, let's pause for a moment and have an opening prayer. And if you'd like, also a hymn. And now for a moment of unity, we are going to say the Shema together. I'm going to say it first in Hebrew and then in English. And then I'm going to pause here in the video so that we can all say it together as we're watching the video. So that we can be one in Christ. And this, this prayer that the Lord has asked us to say together to remind us who we are, and that is Israel, and that even as God is one, we too are one. Shema Yisrael, Yiva Eloheinu, Yiva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yiva is our Elohim. Yiva is unity. We are now going to hear a message from Brother James Piper. Hello, everybody. I'm James Piper. I uh, greet you uh, today on the, on the Sabbath day, and I've been asked to give the message today. We're going to talk about Luke uh, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. So before we start that, um, we're, we're going to think about Jesus' childhood or what Jesus was like as a child. And um, I can only imagine what it was like to have a... Um, a child like Jesus, um, I just kind of wonder, like, did did Mary and Joseph keep him? How did they, how did Mary and Joseph keep him safe? Did they have him in plain sight, or did they uh, have him hidden in a cave or something? Um, I haven't found out what the answer to that is, but I'm sure someday we'll know. So, um, as it says in Luke two, verse forty one through fifty two, we're going to talk about twelve year old Jesus. Um, yearly uh, visit to the uh, uh, Passover festival that's held in Jerusalem. After the festival, Jesus somehow stayed behind while his family traveled for a whole day. It took three days for Mary and Joseph to find jo Jesus, who was found talking to the elders, teachers, 
and others asking questions. They were astonished by his understanding and the questions that he was asking. When he was found, Jesus could see that Mary and Joseph was, was very worried. Jesus said, when he, um, excuse me, why, why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? Jesus was obedient the rest of the journey, but Mary noticed that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor of God and man. So Jesus left, uh, found a uh, synagogue and talked to people instead of going home with his parents. I'm sure they were really upset. <laughs> but, they, it's, but he's Jesus, you know. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so this, this scripture details um, one of uh, Jesus' most early opportunities to learn and to teach others. As a child, he taught young, old, high stature, and even low stature uh, as well. When Jesus spoke, a crowd of people always gathered around him to hear what he had to say. So, Jesus was sitting there talking to older people and, and, and people that may know more than him and ask some great questions. But I, I kind of wonder, like, how often are we asked to leave our comfort zone and to teach people or to talk to people? So, in my previous uh, tradition, um, I was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I was the Sunday school president for the local branch of the ward that we were in. Um, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was pretty young at the time. I was a um, recently um, became uh, involved with the church again after being gone for a while. And I really didn't know what I was doing. I was learning along uh, with everybody else about what was going on in Sunday school. So in that particular role, you have uh, quite a bit of responsibilities. You have to make sure that, that each class has a teacher in it. And you also have to find substitutes when people can't make it. And then you also have to be ready at a moment's notice to teach because a lot of times people have life that happens to them. So they would have like a flat tire, they would get in an auto accident, their grandma was sick, whatever is going on, um, they wouldn't be able to teach that Sunday. And I know people uh, took advantage of it, but I also think that, uh, that there were some literal uh, problems in people's lives that they needed a hand. And I was always willing to do that. Wasn't very good at teaching people. Um, I didn't know the stories myself. I was gone from the church a long time. So it was really hard for me. Um, and I struggled with it quite a bit, actually. And, and I had trouble approaching people that were, you know, former bishops or high priests or whatever. Um, because it, I just felt overwhelmed by them. You know, and it wasn't anything that they did. It's just, it's like, ah, you got to talk to him. He's, he's real high up there. So I just kind of felt really low all the time. So um, the other thing is, you know, I would have to attend meetings, pastoral meetings about what's going on in the church, um, stuff that needed to be done, move in, move out, all that. And, and I shared rooms with people that were just way up there as far as experience and stature. And I was pretty... Um, I was pretty, uh, you know, overwhelmed by sharing a room with these people. So, and I admired them, and I thought they were great people. So, um, you know, I just did my best. I kind of kept a low profile and just listened. So that's a lot of the things that I did. Um, so, um, so, and then another story I heard about somebody who was uh, getting called to a uh, higher office that maybe wasn't ready for it, was my uh, mentor. My mentor was um, is a community Christ minister, and he was called to the office of a high priest. In community Christ, that is a pretty rare calling. You don't get a lot of high priests. There's quite a few of them, but it's it's not as common as some other traditions. Um, so, and when he was called to that by, uh, I don't know who did it, must have been someone, another high priest, uh, he told that person, he says, you know, hey, I'm not ready to be a high priest. I've done these things in my life that I'm not proud of. There are some things that just feel overwhelming to me. I'm not sure if this is of God. I'm not sure if 
you know, you got the right person for this role. And I kind of felt that way too with the Sunday school calling. Um, and uh, that person had a, a, had a pretty valid point. He says, sometimes you're called for the person that you will be tomorrow, not the person that you are today. So when you really think about it, it's like you got to have experience in order to be a high priest or a bishop or whatever. So if unless you were a bishop before, you're not going to be able to be a great bishop right away. You're going to make some errors, um, and they're they're in earnest. I mean, you're just you're going to have an error, or you're going to say the wrong thing or whatever. It, it we're human beings. So unless you have been trained to be a bishop or have some kind of background that would make it easier for you to be a bishop, you're going to run into some issues like that. So um, same with the high priest. High priests have a lot of responsibilities in community of Christ for the for the welfare of all the memberships uh, that are around it. And he's and that person is a world church minister. So it's not just the United States stuff. It's everywhere. So whenever ta someone taps him on the shoulder and say, you know, hey, I need some help from a high priest. He's right there. I'm right there with him. Um, I can't act as a high priest, but I can act as a support person for whatever is going on. Um, so those experiences that we run into as being a call to serve a certain um, certain office or a task or even just doing basic things like cleaning a church or something, you know, they help us um, on our mission ahead. So me sitting in that room with all those people at the in the war councils and whatever, they helped me not really the day of the, that everything was happening, but later on as I as I grow into other responsibilities. So um, so I have to admit myself that callings are are and are very daunting for me. You know, it's like you always wonder like. Gosh, they couldn't find five other people, and I'm the sixth person on the list, or whatever. You can't really think that way. Um, so, you know, it is kind of daunting. No, I gotta admit. Um, some sometimes I wonder, you know, just with what I'm doing today. You know, if we talk about this movement that we're in, the um, the Fellowship of Christ. You know, you kind of wonder, like, what if there? What if all of a sudden we get hundreds of people participating in our services, or or something that'd be pretty awesome but it'd be pretty uh, substantial for us to to handle um, what happens when we get a thousand people thousands of people to come that that would be pretty awesome as well um, and I know that God will give us the wisdom and, and the energy to to help all those people be have better relationships with God however God wants to use us you know we're ready for it um, we might not be the best at it right away, but we'll be better at it later. So, um, I think God knows what's in store for us. We don't know what's in store for us. God already knows. So, I think God puts us in these positions so we can help our future self with the things that he wants us to do. Um, we need to trust ourselves and have judgment and take risks just like Jesus did in the synagogue that day. Um, he probably knew that Mary and you know his mom and dad would be pretty mad that that he ran off, um, but something called him there, and some something got him there to that particular spot. So when we're extending a call, we need to make sure that we ask God that the call is correct our, for ourselves, and wait for that inspiration. Um, and also, we need to find partners in crime as well, somebody who's going to support us in the calling, whether it's our spouse or someone else, um, what will, uh, you know, because it will help us make sure that we're on the right path and then maybe a hand or two when things get uh, kind of uh, um, busy. So, and to tell you the truth, I've, I've turned down callings. I've turned down tons of callings um, in the past. I was you know, just because I didn't feel comfortable with it. Like, I got a calling for scouting once. It's like, no, I, I've been through that program. I I don't know what to do with teenage boys. I don't have any boys myself. I have girls. So, didn't take that one. Um, and there's been other callings, too. I've been like, you know, yeah, I'm not ready for that. Or I'd rather move over here. Or I'd rather do this instead. Um, in a movement like this, you have that ability to... to, to 
if you feel a calling to something, you, you, you're, you're doing it. You know, we're, we're at the ground level here. If, if you want to say the prayers for the, for the sacrament, I'm sure David will set you up with that. You know, whatever. Um, you, you know what you can handle and what you want to try and what God calls you to do. You just let us know. Um, and I know David asks for, um, for help a lot in the, in the, in the videos. And I just want to say that David is sincere about this. He is not doing this to get himself rich. He's not doing this because he wants notoriety or he wants to um, have some kind of ulterior motive or whatever. He is a man of God. Um, just like there are a lot of men, a lot of men and women that are of God, and David's trying to do something special, and I want to do my best to be there for him, to do these kind of things for him, and and um, I appreciate him, and he's, I think we're we're on to something that that the world needs. So um, we'll see what happens with it. Um, and as far as your participation goes, I, I know it gets kind of tough to participate in online things, especially if you don't really know who we are. You don't know who we are. We could, we could be, uh, we could be the wrong type of people that you want to hang out with. Just watching these videos helps us. We look and see how many people watch our videos, and if it's twenty, if it's thirty, if it's fifty or hundred, wow, that is awesome. We, if we we appreciate every single click we appreciate everybody listening to what we have to say because it's important but it also keeps us going and I appreciate it and I know David does and everybody else who works in the, uh, in the fellowship we participate your views and um, I hope you continue doing that subscribe and Share your videos with your friend, the videos with your friends. That'd be cool. But whatever makes you comfortable is 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 cool with us. So we can be whatever you want it to be. Um, we can be your supplemental for your church experience. We can be your only church experience. It could be curiosity, um, whatever you want. We don't ask anything in return. Um, and I ask you to pray for us as we try different things, as we try to reach people through YouTube and other uh, other means. Because we can sure use our prayers. We all have families, we have personal lives, professional lives, and we try to juggle all the stuff in order to um, make a difference in the world today. And we want to be like Jesus. We want to grow in wisdom and strength and stature and be in favor with God and man. We really, really want that. Because this world is a lonely place. And traditional church doesn't always work for people. And it's okay that it doesn't work for people. There's lots of different ways to reach God. And just thinking about different things... Um, that in the scriptures or what you hear in some of these um, some of these videos or other videos is is a, is still a sign of, of love toward him. So um, I appreciate it. Appreciate all the prayers and the thumbs up and all those other nice things. And um, I leave you these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This time we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, Outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, 
we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank James for taking the time to put together this message and ask you to please like and share this video. If you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe. And if you do watch these regularly and you're able to join us on Sunday to watch it together, then I look forward to seeing you there. Heal him should I. We bow our heads before thee at this time. We thank you for the opportunities you presented to us. We thank you for this time that we have together to share in the gospel of Jesus Christ and to learn from one another. We thank you for our brother James, for the message that he shared, and for his willingness to participate and help in these services. We ask that you please bless us as we move forward in your name, that we'll be able to meet together in person, that we'll be able to continue making these videos. We ask that you please send brothers and sisters to us that can help provide this service to the saints that need it. That people can hear from the many voices that we have in our movement and feel the love of God stemming from one another. We ask a special blessing once again that you will please help build, help inspire the sisters that you have called to help build the sisterhood. That you will send us the people that we need, the prophetic people, to help build the programs that we need for children, for teenagers, for families, so we can all grow together in Christ, not just the individual. We ask that you please, we see you closing the things that are dividing us, the things that are keeping us from meeting in person, one with another, and we ask that you please continue to build bridges and break through barriers so that we can be one in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask for your help in building the temple. Please send us the people that we need and the financial resources that we need to accomplish this task. Right now we are looking at building in Michigan. And if this is your will, then we ask that you please awaken the saints in Michigan. Help them to know that now is the time to begin coming together so that we have people to fill the building that we're talking about building. An empty building is only a church to this world. A building shouldn't exist for people to 
worship or look up to, but rather to meet the needs of the people. As Jesus said, man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath for man. So too, I believe, are the temples. Man isn't made for the temples, but the temples for man. And women, of course. And so therefore, we ask you to please help us find these people that need the temple that you're asking us to build. Please help us strengthen our families, strengthen not only our personal relationships with you, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, but the relationships with our significant others, with our families, with our immediate families and our extended families, with our friends. Help us to build this kingdom that you have called us to build by loving one another just a little bit more. Giving of ourselves just a little bit more. Again, we thank you for all the many blessings and we pray these things to you humbly. In the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.